My name is Jennifer McLaren and I am the principal E-flat clarinet player in the Philharmonia Orchestra. Uh, the E-flat clarinet is sometimes known as the piccolo clarinet and is uh, effectively the piccolo of the clarinet family, um, which means it is a small instrument um, as opposed to the normal clarinet, which is considerably larger, as you can see. Uh, this means uh, that the instrument plays quite a lot higher than normal clarinet, but uh, also, in fact, plays an awful lot louder than it. Um, like the normal clarinet, uh, we use a reed, which is a piece of cane which has been specially cut. Uh, and we attach that to the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece has a flat table with a hole in it. And we attach that with a ligature, which is this, uh, typically made of either metal, uh, leather, or even string. When attached, like this, when we blow down it, we make the reed vibrate. Um, and that in turn makes the air column inside the instrument vibrate, um, which makes sound. And then we determine what pitch, what notes we want to play by moving our fingers up and down on the keys. That's just about as high as I can get out of it. I first played the E-flat clarinet when I was in the National Youth Orchestra of Scotland because um, the chap that was playing the E-flat clarinet uh, got sick before the last concert. I had a nasty throat infection and he couldn't play. So I sight read the E-flat clarinet part to Ein Heldenleben by Richard Strauss um, in the concert, which was quite scary. Although, to be honest, it does, it's not any easier now than it was then, uh, which must have been ooh, maybe 25 years ago, something like that. And I immediately liked it. It just seemed like, um, like great fun. Um, and the other reason I ended up uh, doing it was because I, I didn't do piano as a second study when I went to study. I studied at the Royal College of Music and I managed to persuade them to let me do E-flat clarinet as a second study, which meant I had a lot of lessons on it, uh, much more than I would normally have had. Um, so I really got stuck into it and really enjoyed playing it. And I think it probably suits my personality. The E-flat clarinet, uh, fingering-wise, the basic fingering uh, pattern is exactly the same as it is on the ordinary clarinet. The only thing with E-flat clarinets is they're not really, none of them are really terribly well in tune. So, and that, of course, if you're going to be playing very, very high and very, very loud, is absolutely critical. I mean, it's critical anyway, but it's, it, you know, it can be very, very embarrassing if it's not exactly right. So playing in tune is the key thing with E-flat clarinet. So particularly on the high notes, we have a, a large range of different fingerings all for the same note, which we will use in different contexts. Uh, depending on who I'm playing with or depending on the articulation, uh, what note I've played before, what I'm playing afterwards, uh, depending on the speed of the passage of music, um, a whole load of variables. Um, so that's, that's the most important thing in the E-flat clarinet. Um, as I, tell my, I tell my students that the, that the most important thing about playing the E-flat clarinet, the, most, the three most important things about playing the E-flat clarinet are pitch, pitch and pitch. Um, anything after that is, is definitely secondary. Um, yes, we try to make a nice sound on it, um, but it absolutely has to be in tune. So that is the most difficult thing about it. Um, otherwise, playing-wise, um, despite the fact that it's a smaller instrument, in a lot of ways it requires a lot more air to play it. It's, um, I always think of that as being almost more similar to playing the bass clarinet, strangely. Um, so, you know, we, we do need to, so I, I will always make sure that I'm sitting very well. I, I tend to take very, very big breaths um, to play. Uh, that will help to support the pitch, as well as, of course, give me the volume that I need. When we tongue on the clarinet, um, we produce, uh, and most people think of it as a sort of ta-ta-ta noise that we produce on the reed. It's actually more like a D. Um, 
and um, the idea is to be able to con control that so that we can control the length of the note very, very precisely because it's often very important that we uh, are matching that with other, ple other people that are doing the same articulation. So, staccato, going to be super short to go with something a little bit more long. to something that was a bit more towards the legato side. And then a very legato tonguing. To full legato, no tonguing at all. Occasionally on the E-flat clarinet, we also have to flutter tongue, which can be a bit tricky on the clarinet, um, but it goes like this. which is pronouncing a trrr right on the reed. Actually, there are different techniques for doing that. Some people will trrr right on the reed, which is what I do. Some people can roll their tongue on the hard palate. And some people do a, a slightly, slightly nasty thing at the back of their throat. Uh, <laughs> not that. Um, which just gives you a sore throat, to be honest. But yeah, so I trrr right on the end of the reed. Um, in the orchestra, uh, the E-flat clarinet plays a lot of quite spiky, kind of aggressive music. It's often very, very loud, um, a lot of short notes, a lot of very high notes. Um, so we, uh, we actually tongue quite hard in the E-flat clarinet, probably tongue harder in the E-flat clarinet than we do in the normal clarinet. Um, by and large, uh, it can take it, um, and it, it really needs it to get the, to get the character. Um, one particular example is uh, the fifth movement of Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, which is Sabbath. So obviously it's all, you know, kind of supernatural, witches, uh, it needs a bit of nastiness and menace to it. So we, we like to play this very, very strongly. That was uh, Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, probably the first orchestral piece that uh, had the E-flat clarinet in it. Um, other composers that have written a lot of E-flat parts have been Mahler, Strauss, Stravinsky, Shostakovich, uh, and Ravel, um, and Prokofiev. These are probably the main ones, but uh, certainly nowadays there's quite a lot of stuff, more the more modern music, more contemporary music using E-flat clarinet because it has such a particular uh, sound, piercing sound. So it's all, it's all really about the, uh, the, the color of the, the color of it and also the particular kind of cheeky, spiky, slightly aggressive nature of the instrument. We do occasionally get to play the odd nice little legato tune. Um, it's a nice, solos, uh, nice solo in Ravel's Bolero. Um, but there's not too much of that. And by and large, uh, most of the music that uh, I play in the E-flat clarinet is loud, possibly 90 to 95% of it, 40 fortissimal. So it's a pretty much full on, it's a full on job. We do quite a lot of sitting around waiting for the big moment, but when we play, we play and we, it's full throttle all the way. Uh, one of the intonation problems in the clarinet in general is that it's uh, inclined to go quite sharp, quite quickly when it warms up. Um, so that's, we will then adjust the intonation using the barrel like that, um, pull it out to make it longer, um, push it in and then make it shorter again to bring it back if it's gotten a bit flat. Um, one of the problems playing in the orchestra is that the clarinet, because of its partic very particular acoustics, is that it behaves uh, in a slightly opposite way to the other woodwind instruments. So. When the clarinet is played very quietly, it tends to go a little bit sharp. And when it's played very loudly, it's inclined to go a little bit flat. And by and large, that is the opposite of all the other woodwind instruments. Uh, so we have to accommodate that. I mean, everybody, of course, um, by the time they're playing professionally, 
is very adept at adjusting for that. But that's one of the very specific difficulties of the clarinet within the orchestra. Uh, strangely, the E-flat clarinet uh, doesn't always obey those particular rules. Um, and sometimes playing very high and very loudly, it can actually be a little bit easier to get the pitch up playing loudly than it is to play it very quietly. And that's actually because uh, playing a very high note very quietly on the E-flat clarinet is quite difficult to support the pitch uh, well enough to get it up to get it up to the to the right level. So that is that's a little oddity just of the E flat clarinet. Due to the nature of the music written for the E flat clarinet, i.e. that it's very high and very loud, uh, it's also tends to be very, very exposed. So if you get it wrong, everybody is going to know about it. So it does require a certain kind of approach and perhaps a certain kind of personality uh, to go for it. It's basically take no prisoners and you know, be confident. Is that you need to have a lot of confidence that you're going to absolutely hit that top G right on the nose. Because if you don't, it's not going to sound very good. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Essa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores, hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries, and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.